Hey, it's Science Girl with another XMR Rifle Battle. Again from the PSS this time. Don't worry, that won't last for long. Next battle is going to be against another YouTuber again. Team Outlook here. Once again, there's Espeon, who... Spoilers. Not that it really matters. Once again, has nothing to do in this battle. Gets completely destroyed without doing anything. Why does Espeon never get a chance? to attack and show its power. It can never set up and actually do anything. Why? There's just never a good opportunity for us beyond. Something bad always happens. And looking at the opponent's team, pretty basic. The average Staller Umbreon And pretty much everything else is very uncommon stuff, so I didn't quite know much about them. Ludicolo, obviously, is always going to be running Rain Dance. Sock. I didn't quite know what Sock was all about. They're usually just pretty straightforward attackers, sometimes with setup. So I love with Pyro, because there's nothing on that team that's a major threat to him, so he can just go th and tear through anything. And he proceeds to do just that. And props on the name Merlin Inferno. That's very funny. So I figured that this thing was choice and was gonna use Thunderbolt on me. So the only option I had was to go out to Dust Noir. And I was exactly right. I never did find out if it was choice though. Actually, I'm not sure. It might. I might have found that out. I don't quite remember. We might find out later in the battle because this was a pretty long while ago, so I don't remember everything in detail. Here I knew that the Rain Dance was coming, so I went for the Shadow Sneak to get off as much damage as possible. Turns out it was going for Synthesis instead of Rain Dance. I don't think it did have Rain Dance. I guess it didn't. So here I figured, yes, Espeon has the perfect time set up for once. But then the Umbreon has the payback. I figured that I could live one payback. Oh wait, not yet. Umbreon probably figured that I would switch out and went for the Moonlight. So, here, I'm figuring I can live one payback from this thing. And still, it doesn't use payback. So, the taunt now forces it into attacking me. Here is where I should have gone for Dazzling Gleam. 
but instead I got greedy and went for another setup, and it uses the payback, which is its only attacking move, and just takes me straight out. And that's my cat again. She made some noises in two episodes ago. I'm recording the past four videos, battle videos here on the same day, same afternoon. So it was only about ten or something minutes ago, actually twenty minutes ago, that I was recording the incredibly stally battle that lasted for nearly sixty turns. So once again, I'm not going to let Pyro get hit by that Thunderbolt, so I switch in Florissa to tank it. And of course the crit didn't really matter. And the Quick Claw doesn't make any sense with the thing that's using Mirror Coat. I don't see the point of having a Quick Claw on something that's purposely going to be using moves that go last. So here I sent in Miyuki so I could set up and also figuring that they would not go for any kind of ice move, figuring that I would have a weakness policy and I wanted that. So there, I don't know what was going on. I don't know why they were using a move that went last again, when they only had one HP left. It might have been a misclick, that's what I'm figuring. And Yuki avoids the Stone Edge that probably wouldn't have killed anyway. And now she's perfectly prepared to massacre the massacre. Except that the Ice Beam destroyed her. Mm -mm -mm. So now I find out if Pyro can, well actually no, I don't find out if Pyro can live a Thunderbolt, because it's locked into Ice Beam, obviously. And here I find out it is Choice Scarf, I said we'd find that out later on anyway. And judging by the amount of damage Ice Beam did, I'm guessing that Thunderbolt wouldn't have taken Pyro out. So, if you want to battle me, comment below asking for a battle, and I'll get back to you. So, see you next time.